Hello, so as you can see, I'm in my studio today and I'm surrounded by my completed wild floral work, which I've set up so that I can share, share it with you and take you through it. And uh, in a while, I'll turn the camera around so I can, I can do just that. And you can see much more of the detail, hopefully, than you get by just uh, looking at photographs on the website, which is why I thought it would be really helpful if I could try and talk you through this work. And also it means that you get a little bit more perspective on how the work has come about and some of the background to the very specific uh, pieces of work that I've got uh, here. Uh, and so if you've been following me for a while, you'll realise that I uh, have been creating this body of work for a while. Uh, it's about the wild flora along the country lane during my walks during the autumn time. Uh, and uh, this sort of walk is a very local walk to me. And uh, during the autumn, it's so wonderful because you've got such a richness of colour and texture and all of, and detail uh, and you know there there are massive sways there are grassy banks foxgloves uh, lots of uh, seed heads uh, so you've got the cow parsley all in sort of the umbellifera kind of seed heads uh, you've got the rose bay willow herb suede which are just huge and dramatic and pink and architectural you've got the brambles and so on and so it's that which has formed the basis of this work uh, and you'll also realize if you've been following me for a while that i do a lot of work as a sort of connection with my experience i do a lot of work on location in the first instance and then bring that back to the studio uh, and i work extensively in sketchbooks and i'm not going to go through them today i've got a few dotted around but i'm not going to go through them today but they are all uh talked about on my youtube channel with a playlist about this specific work series uh, which is available for you to have a look at and i'll put the link uh, into the newsletter so that you can see that if you if you want to check through so one of the things I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about before turning the camera around is the kind of the, the way of this work. And the work is not representative uh, in the sense that it's not a single view. Um, but what it is, is very connected to the experience. And I'd like to think that this is this work is all about the feel uh, of that place, the colours, the textures, the marks. And hopefully if you're if you're interested in in nature and landscape and you like to have that in, in artwork in your house, then this might be for you because it has the feel, hopefully, <laughs> of of walking down a country lane without necessarily being a single view of walking down a country lane. And hopefully the colours and marks reflect that. They are quite contemporary, but I think that this work would fit in either a contemporary or a more traditional setting. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to start with talking about the works that I've got on paper. Okay, so here are my works on paper and I'll start with the these two black and white uh, works, uh, which were actually done uh, mostly on location. And uh, these are A3 size with a mount around them and they will come cellophane wrap. So if I go in uh, close, you'll be able to see that these are based on uh, charcoal, uh, ink uh, and pencil and a whole uh, mix of uh, media, but all black and white. And uh, these, if, if anything, these two are more representative than any of my other work. But obviously, as you can see, they're much looser than a, a typical uh, rendition, hopefully. By me going in really close, you can see a lot of the detail of the different marks and textures. Uh, and it's amazing, isn't it, how much detail you can get with limited media. I'm a big fan of charcoal. Uh, although it's quite messy, uh, it's also quite wonderful and soft and uh, different uh, charcoals give you different effects. So this is willow charcoal and compressed charcoal. And the darker black is the ink. And then I've been using pencil graphite stick in there as well. And then if I go over to the other one, the other one is uh, similar but different. Um, this again has is done with this is has the same media, uh, but uh, used in a slightly different way. And more compressed charcoal is used in this one. Gives you a real feel for the richness and complexity of the wild flora uh, in the autumn time. And here we are with the three uh, mixed media 
uh, pieces that are also on a paper, this time uh, it's on hot, hot pressed watercolour paper. And there are layers of collage and paint and other mixed media in these. And if I go in, you'll be able to see a little bit, hopefully a little bit more detail. Uh, so this is one that is based on the uh, Rose Bay Willow Herb. It's very loose and expressive. There are, it's the start point where um, some pieces of work that were actually about the Rose Bay Willow Herb that were torn up and uh, elements of those were the start of this piece. Uh, and then I worked over with inks and acrylic paint and pencil and other media. Uh, and hopefully you can see the, the fine marks and textures and details and text and scratching and so on. So that's the first of them. The second one really is all about the grassy banks and uh, the depth of, of the textures and colours and shapes and well, everything going on in the, in the within the grassy banks really and there's a sort of real sort of goldenness about the grassy banks in certain lights especially in the autumn time because you've got all of the lovely rich golds and oranges and burnt uh, sort of colours uh, and then that combines with the green often the green is quite leathery uh, sometimes it's brighter and that green really comes from the grasses and the nettles uh, a lot of the actual flowers are kind of going off, so there's not a lot of green in those. Um, but you have a real richness and a real tangled mess. And that's really what I was trying to portray in this uh, this piece. Hopefully you can see the layers and the, the inks. And again, collage of all types. Some of it is handwritten, some of it is uh, found papers. And then the final one is very much about the brambles and the wire, wiriness of the brambles and those arching lines and crossover lines. And this was one that I worked on and worked on to get that real feel um, of, the, of, the, of the lines that you get in the brambles. Uh, as well as the kind of richness of green that you get from uh, the dying off leaves and so on. But there's a sort of a, ri a real sort of rich sort of tangle going on there. And that's what this one aims to portray. And hopefully you can see again, this is text from pattern paper. And there are other torn pieces of paint paper there. And then layers of paint and inks as well. So hopefully those three I'll give you a feel for the walking along the country lane during the autumn time. So these small panels are, are my eight uh, pieces that are 15 centimetres by 20 centimetres. And uh, the wonderful thing about this small size is that they are uh, much like a sketchbook page. And I've kind of they're like working on little jewels, and so there's layer upon layer of collage and paint, um, and and they're they're a sort of a really uh, very sort of appealing way of working, or well, I have found it so because it is very related to my sketchbook work, uh, and I've called these a uh, wild flora gems uh, to kind of connect in with that sort of jewel like feeling, uh, and they are nicely sort of painted and then at the back I've got D-rings and cords so they can easily, they're ready to hang. I'm going to put them on the shelf so that you can see them much better and see the individual pairs. Okay so these are the first two pairs and I'll go in and start with this uh, first pair and uh, get really close so you can see the layering and the texture uh, and the marks and there's lots of different media involved in these as well. Uh, th these two as it happened really became about the, 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 the kind of the, almost like the composition looking down the country lane uh, and uh, reflecting the colours and, and, and textures and marks. Although, as I've said before, they're not a, a literal scene, but it's just some of the shapes and textures and, and colours and trying to get a real sort of richness and a feel uh, of, uh, of that place.
So those are the first two. So that's Wild Flora Gems 1 and 2. And then these are much about the Rose Bay, Bay Willow Herb as you uh, meander down the lane. And again, a similar richness of uh, collage and paint and scratching in and different marks to reflect the marks are of that landscape at that time and the feel of that landscape. The actual Rose Bay Willow Herb is such a dramatic plant, uh, especially at this time of year, and the pinks and the verticals and these sorts of white marks that you see everywhere across them as they, stay, as they go to seed is a thing. And these are the other half of my wild flora gems. So these are what these are two are wild flora gems five and six, and these all are all about the brambles uh, in the autumn time along the along the country lane. If I move in, hopefully you can see all the textures and uh, detail, uh, layering to sort of tr try and create that real volume effect. And obviously the rich colours of the brambles, the reds and oranges and purples against the golds of the grasses. And then the other piece, similar but different. Uh, again, uh, the purples and the, and the golds, but this time focusing a little bit more on the arching stems against the blue contrast of the sky. Just creating that real feel of the of, of those um that tangle of, of stems so those are the two bramble pieces and then on the other side last two pieces wild flora gems seven and eight these two are all about the grassy banks uh, and the and the uh, the grassy banks along the country lane if i go in hopefully you can see the effects i've used to create the sort of feel of the textures of the grasses so there's Lots of collage and paint and layering and creating depth with all of the different marks and so on. Because although in some ways the grassy banks are kind of buff and neutral colours, um, there's lots going on in them and I've used the texture to create that feel of the depth of them. And this one, again, the, the blue contrast with the orange and the textures created. So these are the three panoramics and these were created following walking along the lane and creating a long Constantina uh, sketchbook using uh, various pastels. And I would uh, create these long drawings of the different sorts of clumps of planting and how that kind of uh, works and resonated along the lane. And these are a reflection of that. And uh, I'm trying to really create that sort of feel as though you are walking along the lane and you are glimpsing and seeing this planting as you go. And I'm going to show you these individually now on the shelf so that you can see some of the detail. Okay, so I'll go in close so that you can see the detail of this first uh, panoramic along the lane one, which is all about the Rose Bay Willow Herb. And hopefully you can see the layers of mark making and collage and paint. And there's a real richness in this one and a depth, hopefully, so that you almost gives the impression of looking through planting and lots of scratching in. And some of the marks are related to the way the seed heads are on the Rose Bay Willow Herb. So hopefully you can see. So this is along the lane two, which is all about the grassy banks. And again, I'll just go in so that you can see there's lots of text in this one. Lots of layering similarly to the other one and collage and papers and mixed mark making. And hopefully again the impression of the seed heads and the rich depth of the planting. And this final one is all about, uh, which is along the lane three, is all about the banks of brambles and again lots of richness lots of scratchy mark making and varied 
lines in this one that reflect the brambles. So if I come along the side, you see lots of scratchy mark making, which contrasts well and the sort of finer lines contrasting with much thicker uh, marks and, and arches, which is very typical uh, of the uh, brambles. Finally, I'm going to share with you these three works on my painting wall. And I'll walk in and so that you can just see the top ones in the first instance. These two pieces are going to be on show uh, at Dean Clough at the MAFA, Manchester Academy of Fine Art, summer exhibition that starts uh, on Saturday the 17th. So it's already started. And when you see this video and uh, with a preview and then it continues for a month. And uh, I've put the, the links and details of that in previous newsletters. Uh, but these two works will be on show there uh, and are available to buy uh, there. So let me just go into, in case you don't get a chance to see them in person, uh, you can go and see lots and lots of textural richness here and layering. I was really trying to get the energy of the grassy banks in this one and the feel of the seed heads and that real sort of sense of the white dust that is kind of floating in the air. And this one is, as I say, this is this is called uh, Promises, Promises. And then the other one, Push Me, Pull Me, is all about the Rose Bay Willow Herb. And if I go in there, you'll see that the real richness of pinks and the architectural nature of that planting, trying to reflect that in this rather uh, ostentatious or rather dramatic pink uh, piece and of course the grey reflecting the uh, stone walls but without literally showing them but actually that feel of the stone walls again the static nature against the planting and the contrast of the stability of that and the lumpiness of the stone against the rather ostentatious planting so that's push me pull me and as I say those will be on show at Dean, at Dean Clough uh, until uh, the middle of July Okay, and the final piece I want to share here, this is a large piece, it's an 50, uh, sort of 80 centimetres by 50 centimetres. I'm showing it here not framed because it was just easier to anchor it, uh, but it will be framed in exactly the same frame as you see for the others above there. Uh, and if I go in close again, this is about the Rose Bay Willow Herb, but slightly differently. Uh, this is called Similar But Different. And this is all about looking at the Rose Bay Willow Herb face on. So instead of walking down the lane, you're looking at it face on. And it's just that impression what it could be like. There's lots of layering, lots of masking, lots of covering up, lots of drips, texture, and also... Uh, quite a bit of collage and layering going on here. Hopefully you get a sense of the rich nature of this piece. Many, many layers built over, over time, constantly adding, constantly taking away uh, to create that real feel of that rich rose bay willow herb planting. So I hope that was a helpful whistle stop tour of my wild flora collection. But if you do have any further questions, uh, things you want clarifying, then please don't hesitate to get in contact. Okay, thanks then, bye bye.